It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Here's my good word for today. It's about a honey of a new cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. And it's my hunch you'll like it just as much as we do out here at the Double R Bar Ranch. You see, Post Sugar Crisp is just downright good eating. And it's good so many different ways. Try it real soon, won't you? Well, let's see about today's story, shall we? Almost since the West was first settled, there have been range wars between small farmers who came to till the land. Nesters, they're called, and cattlemen who demand the land be used only for grazing their herds. Until now, Paradise Valley has been free of such trouble, but during the last few years, more and more nesters have settled one rich portion near the foothills, and ill feelings are rising. A range war seems imminent. Hold on here, neighbors. Now, we won't be able to hold our own in a range war against the ranchers unless we can agree among ourselves. Now, you might remember this. We've got to stick together because we're nesters. Nobody's going to fight for us. Just a minute now. Quiet down, boys. Before we go any further, there's one man here who's not one of us. He doesn't belong at our meeting. Well, it, it, it sounds as if you're referring to me, Glenn, but I know you don't. Yes, mean. sir, I am referring to you, Mr. Fisher. Well, now, you, you can't mean that. I am heart and soul with you, Nesters. Fisher, I'm... we've listened to you tell where your heart and soul is for longer than six months. We're awful sick of it. You're just another common, ordinary promoter who sides with anyone who'll butter his bread. And we know it. You sold us our land. You guaranteed we'd have no trouble with the ranchers. They'd welcome us, you said. Boys, boys, now now give me a chance to talk. I have a right to defend myself. Not here, you haven't, Fisher. We're asking you to get out and get out now. But I am with you, Nestor's heart and soul. We're asking you to get out, Fisher. Very well. If that's the way it is, that's the way it is. I hope when you're hard-pressed, you'll remember that I wanted to be your ally. Let's get on with our meeting, boys. John. John, what are you doing here? I told you... I guess I ain't as simple as you thought, Mr. Fisher. I told you to sneak in and listen to what went on at the rancher's meeting. I said I'd take care of this nester's meeting. Yep, I know, but uh, I went to the ranchers' meeting, and I even cornered a couple of them before the meeting, and I pretended I knew there was oil on their land and tried to get me and my doodlebug a job locating it. But that didn't cut no ice. When the meeting started, they cut kicked me right out. <laughs> yeah, the joke's on you, Mr. Fisher. You thought everybody figured me to be a harmless old coot and had let me stay, but they didn't. My plan didn't work with these nesters either. Well, we'll just have to keep working. Where's your truck? Right down at the end of the lane. You go down there and wait. I'll get on my horse and meet you. Yeah, then what? We'll keep this war going. That's the important thing, to keep the war going so the ranchers and the nesters don't have a chance to get together in a friendly meeting. They'd be apt to settle their differences, and I can't afford that. <laughs> John. Yep, you can come out. Ain't even a speck on the horizon. Fine, fine. You wait for me. 
If you go in up to Tom Hill's place, he ain't home now. He's at the meeting with the ranchers, remember? He's a leader, sort of. I remember. And I also remember Tom bought a big supply of dynamite to blast a road through the pass. It's stored in his machine shed. <laughs> The night sky is torn with the sound and flames of the explosion. The building and all the machinery in it are demolished. Tom Hill, the owner, is also the leader of the ranchers. And to him, this is obviously more work of the nesters. The only question now is, how soon can he destroy every nester in the valley? Morning comes. The sheriff hurries along the street, up to the Eureka restaurant. Roy, I'm glad you're here. Hi, Sheriff. Hi, Sheriff. I need help, and I need it fast. Thinking about that accident out of Tom Hill's place? The ranchers are out there, and they're organizing to raid the nesters. I figured it'd be something like that. Yes, we were just talking about it. Where's Pat Dale? He's out back, working on his Jeep, Nellie Bell, I suppose. Better get him. You better ride along, too, Dale. I can't say as I blame the ranchers for feeling as they do, but there's no evidence whatsoever that the nesters did this. Well, even if there was, you can't have people taking the law into their own hands. Pat, come on, we're riding. Well, can you wait a minute, Roy? I'm putting a set of double-decker, triple-sonic spark plugs on Nellie well, Bell. Forget the spark plugs. If Nellie Bell won't run, then grab a horse. Bullet, come on, boy. We'll need all the help we can get. Things do look serious here at that, Sheriff. Mm. Yeah, stand easy, Nellie Bell. Don't be scared, old girl. What happens now, Roy? Well, let's talk to Tom first. Now just go easy, that's all. These men are on edge. Uh, hi, Tom. Sorry to hear about what happened. And I'm sorrier than you are. I'd hoped we could get together with the nesters and work things out. But it looks as though they want to play rough. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, the sheriff said there's no evidence to indicate the nesters had anything to do with this. No evidence? <laughs> Quiet, Bullet. Tom, you're a reasonable man. You don't want bloodshed any more than I do. No, but I... And I don't want to see ranch property destroyed any more than you do. So what about it? I'd like you fellas to give us a half a day to scout around and see what we can dig up. Well, that's okay with me, if it is with you boys. <laughs> but when the half day is up, we're going after them. Even if you haven't found any evidence. Come on, Dale. Pat, we're riding. Okay, Roy. Pat, you take Bullet in Nellie Bell. You bet. Now, Roy, I'll stick here. Keep on looking. That's a good idea, Sheriff. Where to now, Roy? The Nestor's territory? Yeah. But I want to stop in town on the way and ask the merchants to quit selling guns and ammunition until this is over. Uh, uh, Roy! Oh, howdy, John. I didn't see you. Oh, I travel all over, locating oil fields with my doodle bug, you know. Did I hear you say you was heading for town? Well, yes. We I were... can take you in my truck if you want. It's faster than a horse. Not faster than Trigger. And if Roy ever gives up Trigger for an auto, he'll ride Nellie Bell. Now, Pat. Thanks just the same, John. The idea asking you to ride in a catastrophe like he drives... He's headed out to see the nest is all right, Mr. Fisher, but he's going into town first. You hop in your truck. And get to Glen DeBonna's place before Roy does. Tell DeBonna that Rogers wants to lead the nesters into a trap where the ranchers will take him. Yeah, sure, sure. And that way we'll keep the war going, won't we, Mr. Fisher? Well, let's get to work and talk to everybody that sells ammunition. In a hurry. I'd like to get out to the nesters' settlement as quick as we can. Hey, Roy, could I stay here in town and finish putting on them double-deck, triple-sonic spark plugs on Nellie Bell? What in the world is double-deck, triple-sonic spark plugs? You mean to say you don't know about them? I'm afraid I don't. Why, they're the latest invention. Gonna put oil companies right out of business. Roy, isn't that one of the nesters coming down the street? Where? Yeah, Glenn DeBona. He's their leader, from what I understand. Imagine anybody not knowing about double deck and triple sonic spark plugs. Say, this may save us a trip out to see the nesters. Yeah, it might. Oh. Howdy, Mr. DeBona. Howdy. You're Roy Rogers, aren't you? Yeah. And Dale Evans. Yeah, yeah and I'm double deck, triple sonic. I mean, I'm Patrick Aloysius Brady. We were just on our way out to see you, Mr. DeBona. I didn't suppose a rancher would dare enter our territory these days. And you are a rancher, aren't you, Rogers? Well, I'm the kind of a rancher who believes there's room for everybody in Paradise Valley. We believed that, too, before you ranchers shut off the water and our crops dried up. 
Well, the way I understand it, the water was shut off because nesters were butchering the rancher's cattle. There must be some way of coming to an understanding. For your information, I've got plenty of ammunition for me and my neighbors. We'll come to an understanding, all right. Most likely before the sun is set tonight. I'd like to settle this without any gunplay. Would you mind if we ride out with you and talk to your neighbors? Why, no, not at all. Of course, as long as you want to settle this without guns, you leave yours here. Well, we can drop them off at my cafe, Roy. And that dog, too. Sure. When will you be ready to leave? Right now. Okay. Walk back to the hitching rail with us. We'll get our horses. Pat, will you take care of Bullet? We want to show Mr. DeBone and his neighbors that we do come as friends. Get off your horses. You were sure right when you said your neighbors would all be here, Mr. DeBona. They look as though they're on the warpath, too. Steady, Nellie Bell. Nobody's going to hurt you. This way, Rogers. All right, fine. Come on, Dale, Pat. Hey, maybe you'd better explain why we're here, Mr. DeBona, in case one of your neighbors gets any wrong ideas. I'll take care of things. Roy, are you sure everything's all right here? I, I hope so. Right here. Well, here they are, folks. What John Gallick told us was right. And they were mighty anxious to come on out, especially Rogers. Hey, just a second, Mr. DeBona. I don't get this. Maybe you don't, but we do. Roy, this is a trap. We came out to see if we couldn't make peace. Don't give us that stuff, Rogers. He came out here to see if you couldn't arrange a meeting between us and your rancher friends. Well, that's exactly it. And when we get to the meeting, your rancher friends intend to overpower and run us out of the valley. Yeah. Where did you get any such crooked ideas as that? We can prove it. John Garlic is here. Come on, John. Face up to Rogers. Tell him what you told us. Well, now, well, I... Well, come on, John. What have you got to say? Tell him, John. Hurry up. Well, well... Don't be afraid. Yeah, well, I get around quite a lot on account of my doodle book. It locates oil fields. Cut it short. Get to the point. Yeah, the point is, the ranchers asked Roy to come to you and arrange your meeting over in the ranchers territory. When you folks got there, the ranchers was going to ride in and wipe out the whole bunch. Why, you lying, no good lizard. Her. Pat. Ah, they made their move. Let's take them. They'll get out of here. Pat, do your best, boy. <laughs> Well, this adventure's mighty exciting, hey, listeners? And here's something every bit as exciting. The new Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, pop-out trading cards. Offered you by Post Serials, free of extra cost. There are 36 different pictures in this wonderful series. Real-life pictures of Roy, Dale, Trigger, Bullet, and Pat in exciting action. And here's why these cards are so extra special. You see, the main part of each picture pops right out easy as you please. You have lifelike two-dimensional figures that stand up by themselves. Great for decorating your room or club headquarters. And don't forget, you send no box tops, no money. These Roy Rogers cards are free of extra cost. At your grocers, just look for the trading card packages of these famous Post cereals. Crinkles, Raisin Bran, Grape Nuts Flakes, Bran Flakes, Sugar Crisp, and Post Toasties. Each package brings you one of these wonderful cards. Imagine the terrific display you'll have with all 36. So hurry. Be the first in your gang to get your Roy Rogers King of the Cowboys pop-out trading cards. Get a good supply of your favorite post cereals tomorrow and start collecting and swapping your Roy Rogers cards right away. John Gallick, the self-appointed oil expert of Paradise Valley, faced by the nesters and afraid of them, lies about why Roy is here, saying Roy intended leading the nesters into a trap where the ranchers would destroy them. And when Pat Brady, unable to stomach the lying, impetuously knocks John down, the nesters spring forward to capture Roy, Dale, and Pat. boys. We got them. But now that we got them, what do we do with them? We'll tie them up and dump them out somewhere and let the ranchers find them. 
That'll show the ranchers how much we think of them and their Mr. Roy Rogers. John, you're not taking sides as far as I can tell. So we'll throw Rogers and his friends in the back of your old truck. You drive them back to where they belong. Now, wait a minute, though. I'm just a lone man, and I'm not very strong. What if they should get loose? They won't get loose the way the boys are roping them. Uh, But what if they should? Somebody ought to go with me. Besides, I won't be able to dump them out of the truck by myself. I'm not strong. Hey, Glenn, Charlie Fisher just rode up. Why not send him along with John? Now, boys, boys, no, now, now, listen to me. I'm in the land business. I I can't hope to sell land if I take sides. Fisher, you're riding back with John. We'll give you a chance to prove how much you're on our side. Throw these three on the floor behind the seat. John, we're out of sight now. Those nesters can't see us. I want you to slow down enough so I can jump off. These people are still knocked out. No, no, Mr. Fisher, you're not going to leave me here with them. Rogers can't get loose. You saw how well the boys tied him and his friends. Besides, there's something else I have to do to keep this war going. Sneaking coward. Listen. But just the same to leave me face things alone. Now, John, the sooner we get this war over, the sooner you and I will reap our reward. Even you understand that. Well... Just slow down a little. I'll get out. Everything will be all right. That's good. Ah, see you later, John. He's gone, Roy. We sure have to look that rattler up when we get loose from here. Hey, Roy, I think Trigger's fallen. Why don't you call to him and have him take after Fisher? Not yet. They think we're knocked out. Besides, I want to talk to John alone first. From what we just heard, he and Fisher had something to do with this war. What are you doing, Roy? There's a broken iron strap here in the corner. We might be able to cut ourselves loose. Be careful. John will hear He's kind of simple-minded. There's no telling what he'd do. I just wish Nellie Bell was here. You got it, Roy? Yeah. He's slowing down, Roy. Yeah, this is probably where he intends dumping us. Boy, I'll wrap that doodle bug right around his skinny neck. Now, you just let Roy take the lead, Pat. You've done enough for one day. Well, folks, if you're still unconscious, and I hope you are, this is as far as you go. What'd you say, John? <laughs> hey, you're loose. You bet we are. Yeah, all of us. Yeah, get ready to have your ears set back. Now, Roy, you and me have been friends for a long time. We Hold it, John. I want to know what Fisher meant when he said that as soon as this war was over, you and he would reap your reward. I don't know. Well, what did he mean when he said he had something else to do to keep this war going? What's the matter, Roy? Don't the chip skunk want to talk? Uh, maybe we'd better take you back to the ranchers. He'll talk then. I didn't have anything to do with this. What did Fisher do then? He, he well, you know how it is with my doodlebug. I, I carry my doodlebug around all the time, and whenever I walk across land where there's oil, the doodlebug starts acting up, it's, uh, bobbing like crazy. He's trying to talk us out of it, Roy. Take it easy, Pat. Well, I, I was walking across the nester's land about six months ago, and the doodlebug started bobbing. I knew it was oil on the land, and I told Mr. Fisher about it. He sold the land to the nesters, you know. And he still holds mortgages on it. Yes, sir, that's right. Well, Mr. Fisher, he gave me $50 to keep my mouth shut. Fifty whole dollars, Roy. Yeah? And then a couple of weeks later, he hired me to go out and butcher a couple of steers right on the range where the ranchers would be sure to find out about them, see? And when the ranchers found where their steers were butchered, they blamed the nesters. Is that right? Yes, sir. And to get even, they closed off the water. And a range war started. And that was the whole idea, Roy. It was Mr. Fisher's, though, not mine. I, I didn't know what I was getting into, really. I didn't. All I want is to be Climb left... back in your truck, John. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to turn you over to the sheriff. But, but I didn't do nothing. It was Mr. Fisher. The sheriff will want to talk to you anyhow. Come here, Trigger. Come on, boy. What about Fisher, Roy? We'll bring Bullet out to where he jumped off the truck. Bullet will pick up the trail, and we'll have Mr. Fisher behind bars within a very few hours. Come on, Bullet. Find that trail, boy. I think he's located it, Roy. Okay. You head for town and send word to all the ranchers to meet at the sheriff's office right away, Dale. And tell the sheriff to call the nesters to a meeting at the same place. Sure thing. Bullet and I'll bring in Fisher. And we'll treat everybody to some plain and fancy talk. Whoa, 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 Trigger. Easy for you. Quiet, Bullet. Get away from that door. Come on out, Fisher. I want to talk to you. 
Don't do that again or I'll do a little shooting myself. All right, you ask. Take him, bullet. Get him, boy. No! No! Help! Get him off me! Get him off! Back to Roy in just a minute. But right now, let's hear from Handy, Dandy, and Candy, the three Sugar Crisp Bears. We're the Sugar Crisp Bears, and we want you to meet the grandest treat you ever did eat. Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Yes, those three Sugar Crisp Bears are so right. Post Sugar Crisp is a honey of a new cereal. It's already sweetened, so you don't need sugar. Just add milk or cream. And mother, Sugar Crisp is ideal for snacks when the youngsters are hungry between meals. Made of nourishing puffed wheat, coated with energy-rich honey and sugar. Or they can eat it just like candy right out of the box. Be sure to ask for genuine post-Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on it. That's Get enough, out. boy. Get to your feet, Fisher. Suppose you tell me why you started shooting when I said I wanted to talk to you. I, why, I, why, you, you didn't identify yourself, Roy. There's no use trying to fool me, Fisher. You own the mortgages on the farms those nesters bought, don't you? Why, yes, but what's that got to do with... And if the nesters got into a war with the ranchers, they couldn't pay off the mortgages. Their land would go to you. Oh, now, let's not insinuate that I... I'm not insinuating. I'm telling you the facts. And we got those facts from that dupe of yours, John Golly. Oh, now, I I can explain everything, Roy. John isn't very bright. You can explain when we get back to town. The ranchers and the nesters will be there. And maybe they'll be glad to hear your explanation. That pretty well clears up things, I think, Sheriff. It ought to. All right, you ranchers and nesses. Do you think you can get along like neighbors without any silly range wars? None of you are savages, and this should be a lesson to you. Go on back to your homes and think it over. Come on, Fisher. We'll lock you up with your oil-finding friend. Thanks, Roy. See you at supper time over at the cafe. Okay, Sheriff. Dale. You haven't seen Pat around, have you? Not since he... Oh, here he is. Pat, where have you been? I ain't talking. Say there, fella, you look all tired out. Oh, Roy, I'm so tuckered. I could lie down in a cactus bed and sleep till a week from Tuesday. Oh, Pat, Nellie Bell didn't break down again. Oh, it's them double-deck, triple-sonic spark plugs. The salesmen that come through here selling them told me they was gas savers. I put those double-deck, triple-sonic spark plugs on her. $11.27, including two kinds of tax, and she run out of gas before I got 20 feet. Oh, <laughs> well, now, that's too bad, Pat. But I'll tell you what I'll do. You rest a while, and then I'll loan you a horse so you can be sure you'll get where you want to go. <laughs> oh, mustard and custard. <laughs> Once a year, one contribution, but many, many benefits. That's your community chest, serving the health, welfare, and recreational needs of the place in which you live. Serving, too, our servicemen and women, both here and abroad. Give enough for all the services provided by your community chest. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Fellows and girls, remember Roy's good advice and ask Mom to bring home Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. You'll love Post Sugar Crisp. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at the same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. 
An Art Rush production, tonight's show is directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, and music by Milton Charles. Come and get it, come and get it, for quick two-minute energy for work and play. How about Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those Grape Nuts Flakes? They are so good, good for you, too. The two-minute energy works for you, so how about them, how about them? How about Grape Nuts Flakes? Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Look for Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal in the package with Roy Rogers and Trigger on the front. Featured in our cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Joe Bradley, Charles Seal, Parley Bear, and Bill Green. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup. 